As Thursday draws to a close in Kiev and in Moscow, here are the key developments of the day Russia's that another 771 Ukrainian fighters surrendered at a bombed-out steel plant in Mariupol in the past day, bringing the total to 1, 730. The International Committee of the Red Cross said it has registered hundreds of soldiers emerging from the Azov still still planned as prisoners of war. Ukraine's government didn't comment on the latest numbers, but has said its troops were evacuated from the last holdout in Mariupol into Russian-controlled territory and that Ukrainian officials hoped they would come home in a prisoner exchange. In Ukraine's first war crimes trial, the accused Russian soldier asked the Ukrainian widow to forgive him for killing her husband. The widow, Katerina Shelpova, broke down in tears on the witness stand and later confronted the 21-year-old Russian army sergeant, asking him what he felt when he shot her husband, Oleksandr Shelpov. Fear, said the soldier, Vadim Shishimarin who has pleaded guilty and could face life in prison. I understand you probably won't be able to forgive me. But I ask for your forgiveness. Finland and Sweden have the full, total, complete backing of the EU. As for their application to join NATO, President Biden said at the White House after meeting with Finnish President Sally Niinistö and Swedish Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson. But Turkey has warned it will veto the two countries' applications. Biden said he was sending paperwork to Congress for you. As ratification of their bids. The Senate meanwhile approved $40 billion in new aid to Ukraine, bringing you. As spending on the war to more than $100 million per day, according to defense experts. McDonald's has found a buyer for its Russian operations as it prepares to exit the country after 32 years. The fast food chain plans to hand over more than 800 restaurants in Russia to licensee Alexander Gover, who has operated 25 of them in Siberia since 2015.